Down goes Muhammad Ali. February 10th, 1962. Professional boxer Muhammad Ali was knocked down for the first time in his life by Sonny Banks. As the referee began his count to 10, Ali said that he sat up, looked around and thought to himself, the canvas is no place for a champion. So he rose to his feet, dusted himself off, made sure he was still pretty. <laughs> then he hit Sonny Banks so hard, Mrs. Banks got a headache. <laughs> On that day, Muhammad Ali proved to the world but more importantly to himself, that it's not about the knockdown, it's about the get up. It's about what we do after the knockdown. That is what defines who we are. Now, I'm not a boxer. I've had three fights in my life and my sister won all three. <laughs> boxer or not, I believe I can say at some point we all get hit on the blind side, knocked upside the head, pow, by life. I guess you could say life at times will be your sunny banks, knocking you down flat on your back and then taunting you with a question, what are you going to do now? Like you? I faced my Sonny Banks many times. He began throwing punches at me long before I took my first breath. You see, I was born too much premature after my mom was assaulted by a neighbor. I remained in the hospital for months, my family unsure when I'd be allowed to go home. Three years later, I found and swallowed a bottle of prescription medication. That put me in a coma doctors did not believe I'd survive. Because of that incident, my mom lost custody of me and I was placed in a foster home. While in that home, I was locked inside a closet, mentally and physically abused. But I was still standing. At the age of 11, I held on to the hope of knowing my mom was about to regain custody of me. But before that could happen, she passed away. Boom! That was the knockdown blow for me. I went down and I stayed down. I stayed down and allowed life to begin to count me out. One! I gave up and started feeling sorry for myself. Two, I surrounded myself with all of the wrong people. Three, four, their bad habits quickly became my bad habits. Five, six, at the age of 19, I was sentenced to 15 years in prison. Seven, eight, ashamed of the person I had allowed myself to become, I finally began to plead for help. Nine, a prison counselor named Charles Lyles saw something in me that I didn't know was there. He says this, young man, this doesn't have to be your life. You are capable of doing great things. Before walking away, he looked at me and said, I believe in you. That was the first time I had ever heard those words. That's when I got up. I got up by repeating his words to myself over and over again. Someone believes in you. You can do great things. Soon, his words became my words, and I began to believe in myself. I got up, 
by refusing to continue feeling sorry for myself. I got up by looking for the lesson behind the knockdown. I got up by focusing on my future instead of my past. Now I'm sure you're all thinking, I bet after he got up, his Sonny Banks left him alone and he's lived happily ever after. <laughs> As my children would say, not. <laughs> we all know life doesn't work that way. My Sonny Banks continues to follow me around, trying to knock me back down. And you know what? Sometimes he succeeds. But I get up, I brush myself off, and move forward. When did you get up? Or have you? Perhaps you're preparing to fight some of life's toughest opponents. Maybe your back is already on the canvas. I don't believe it matters where you are. As long as you know there have been others that have faced those same opponents and won, then you have to know that it's possible that you too can win. On that day in 1962, everyone that witnessed that fight knew Muhammad Ali was down, but only he knew he wasn't out. The next time life knocks you down, the most important thing you can do is find a way to rise. Because it's not about the knockdown, it's about the get up. It's about what you do after the knockdown. That is what defines who you are.